Hello, this is R.J. Deacon, reading the Supreme Court of the United States Opinion Syllabus in Houston, Ohio Secretary of State versus A. Philip Randolph Institute. Certiori to the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit. Argued January 10th, 2018. Decided June 11th, 2018. The National Voter Registration Act, NVRA, addresses the removal of ineligible voters from state voting rolls, 52 U.S.C. 2501b, including those who are ineligible by reason of a change in residence, 2507a4. The Act prescribes requirements that a state must meet in order to remove a name on change of residence grounds, 2507b, c, and d. The most relevant of these are found in subsection D, which provides that a state may not remove a name on change of residence grounds unless the reg registrant either A, confirms in writing that he or she has moved, or B, fails to return a pre-addressed postage prepaid return card containing statutory prescribed content and then fails to vote in any election during the period covering the next two general federal elections. In addition to these specific change of residence requirements, the NVRA also contains General Failure to Vote Clause 2507b2, consisting of two parts. It first provides that a state removal program shall not result in the removal of the name of any person by reason of the person's failure to vote. Second, as addressed by the Help America Vote Act of 2002, HAVA, it specifies that nothing in this prohibition may be construed to prohibit a state from using the procedures described above, which is sending a return card and removing registrants who fail to return the card and fail to vote for the requisite time. Since one of the requirements for removal under subsection D is the failure to vote, the explanation added by HAVA makes clear that the failure to vote clauses prohibition on removable, removal by reason of the person's failure to vote does not categorically preclude using non-voting as part of a test for removal. Another provision makes this point even more clearly by providing that no registrant may be removed solely by reason of a failure to vote. 21083A4A Respondents contend that Ohio's process for removing voters on change of residence grounds violates this federal law. The Ohio process at issue relies on the failure to vote for two years as a rough way of identifying voters who may have moved. It sends these non-voters a pre-addressed, postage prepaid return card, asking them to verify that they still reside at the same address. Voters who do not return the card and fail to vote in any election for four more years are presumed to have moved and are removed from the rolls. The Supreme Court held, the process that Ohio uses to remove voters on change of residence grounds does not violate the failure to vote clause or any other part of NVRA. Ohio's removal process follows subsection D to the letter it does not remove a registrant on change of residence grounds unless the registrant is sent and fails to mail back a return card and then fails to vote for an additional four years. Nonetheless, respondents argue that Ohio's process violates subsection B's failure to vote clause by using a person's failure to vote twice over, once as the trigger for sending return cards, and again as one of the two requirements for removal. But Congress could not have meant for the failure to vote clause to cannibalize subsection D in that way. Instead, the failure to vote clause, both as originally enacted in the NVRA and as amended by the HAVA, simply forbids the use of non-voting as the sole criterion for removing a registrant. And Ohio does not use it in that way. The phrase, by reason of, in the failure to vote clause denotes some form of causation. Gross versus FBL Financial Services. 
And in context, soul causation is the only type of causation that harmonizes the failure to vote clause in subsection D. Any other reading would mean that a state that follows subsection D nevertheless can violate the failure to vote clause. When Congress enacted HAVA, it made this point explicit by adding the failure to vote clause in explanation of how the clause is to be read, i.e. in a way that does not contradict subsection D. Respondents and the dissent's alternative reading is inconsistent with both the text of the failure to vote clause and the clarification of its meaning in 21083A4. Among other things, their reading would make HAVA's new language worse than redundant, since no sensible person would read the failure to vote clause as prohibiting what subsections C and D expressly allow. Nor does the court's interpretation render the failure to vote clause superfluous. The cause retains meaning because it prohibits states from using non-voting both as the ground for removal and as the sole evidence for another ground for removal, e.g. as sole evidence that someone has died. Respondents' additional argument that so many registered voters discard return cards upon receipt that the failure to send cards back is worthless as evidence that an addressee has moved is based on a dub dubious empirical conclusion that conflicts with the congressional judgment found in subsection D. Congress clearly did not think that the failure to send back a return card was of no evidentiary value, having made that conduct one of the two requirements for removal under subsection D. Nor has Ohio violated other NVRA provisions. Ohio removes the registrants at issue on a permissible ground, change of residence. The failure to return a notice and the failure to vote simply serve as evidence that a registrant has moved, not the ground itself for removal. The NVRA contains no reliable indicator prerequisite to sending notices requiring states to have good information that someone has moved before sending them a return card. So long as the trigger for sending such notices is uniform, non-discriminatory, and in compliance with the Voting Rights Act, states may use whatever trigger they think best, including the failure to vote. Ohio has not violated the NVRA's Reasonable Effort Provision 2507A4. Even assuming that this provision authorizes federal courts to go beyond the restrictions set out in subsections B, C, and D, and strike down a state law that does not meet some standard of reasonableness, Ohio's process cannot be unreasonable because it uses the change of residence evidence that Congress said it could. The failure to send back a notice coupled with the failure to vote for a requisite period. Ohio's process is accordingly lawful. Justice Alito delivered the opinion of the court in which Chief Justice Roberts and Justices Kennedy, Thomas, and Gorsuch joined. Justice Thomas filed a concurring opinion. Justice Breyer filed a dissenting opinion in which Justices Ginsburg, Sotomayor, and Kagan joined. Justice Sotomayor filed a dissenting opinion. Thank you for listening, and if you would like to join a conversation about any of these opinions, Please find us on Facebook under the same name as the podcast and join the associated discussion group.